Alright, welcome to another episode of the Disruption Podcast. I'm your host, Noor. Oh, AKA you're the only host? Jollof Rice. <laughs> Who else do we have? Um, Daniel here, Chief of Saji. We got Mars, Mars Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. We, we were super excited. We got an amazing guest, exciting stuff. We've seen her all over social media and all that kind of stuff. And um, man, we're excited to get into it. So, no further ado, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got Melissa Yu. Welcome. Hi guys. Hi. Thanks Hello. so much for having me. I'm very excited to be a part of this. Oh, thank excited you for being here. Excited to have you here, yeah. yeah. I know you've had a busy day. I have, I, yeah. I have a busy day every day, but, yeah. um, you know, I think it's all about intentions and what do you put as priority. So mm-hmm. this is pretty Definitely. Cool. Awesome. 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 I think awesome. I even saw in your story you had like five meetings, <laughs> meetings or something today. like yeah, that. Yeah, four yeah, yeah. Did a quick vlog in the car and then <laughs> now here I am. So <laughs> On a Saturday even. Yeah, tomorrow yeah. as well. So oh. well, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for joining oh, us. Good. Yeah. I think we had a, what was that? What was that little interesting question? We were like, let's let's just break the ice a little. If you could have a meal with one person famous, dead or alive, hundreds of years ago, right now, who would you pick? This is breaking the ice. (laughs) 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 This is a serious, straight up question. Yeah, no, good, good. I like it. Get straight to the point. Um, They can be dead or alive. Yeah. Yeah. Famous real person, yeah. or not real? Can they be? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, okay. okay. All right, one person real, one person not real. Okay. Because <laughs> the first person that jumped into my mind would be Harry Potter. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I had to <laughs> clarify that question. I'm a massive Harry Potter series oh, fan wow. girl. Okay. Um, interesting one. Is, yes. Very interesting. Um, that being said, then J.K. Rowling would also probably Ooh. be one. Oh, the author. Is- <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, okay. Ask the follow up question then. <laughs> All right. Now that you've mentioned two people, uh-huh. then. Okay. If you were in an ocean, you can only save one person. They're both in the middle of the ocean, right? You roll up and it's JK Rowling on one side, <laughs> Harry Potter on the other. <laughs> Who are you saving? I'd, uh, you didn't even get me to jump into my rationale for them, too. But um, I'd say JK Rowling because without her, there would be no Harry Potter. That's true. Uh, that is uh, true. Uh, yep. She's the mastermind behind it. Uh, That's that it. That's it. Makes sense. All right. Well, welcome there. <laughs> so random. That was yeah. so random. We had Sorry. to just jump Probably didn't think you guys were going to go there, but yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. But yeah, thank you very much for coming down. Um, I think probably best to start off with um, like a bio about yourself or like, yeah. you, know, you know, your background or your upbringing, all the kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know how yeah. deep you want to jump into it with that kind of a question, but yeah, just for the people <laughs> listening. For those that don't know, I'm watching the video. There's a massive photo <laughs> of my face <laughs> on these guys' scripts. So I'm like, the they've, done, they've done so. their research. <laughs> Um, so that's, I'm like, oh, damn. That's why I flipped the page. I'm like, yeah, I don't I want you it. to I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so I'll go. I'll um, introduce myself a little for your audience that doesn't yeah, sure, may yeah. not have context for who I am. So my name is Melissa Yu. I'm currently 29 years old. And I, I grew up in the southeast suburbs. So I think a lot of you might be able yeah. to relate. Yeah. Uh, the suburb that I grew up in was Patterson Lakes. So probably more towards the Frankston, Mornington Peninsula end. And in the 90s, I grew up in a time where there was no Asian communities in that area. So my whole family, I would say I was one of the only Chinese families growing up in that area. If you don't know where Patterson Lakes is, I'd, I recommend looking up Home and Away. It's very like Summer's Bay. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I picture it. Lots of palm trees, lots of lakes, lots of beach sort of upbringing. So before I even, I guess before I even had any self-awareness or social context, it's like I was born to stand out, like, right. and not in a necessarily good way. Because mm. in as a child and as a kid growing up in Australia, I think what we do is we just try to do anything we can to fit in and to yep. blend in. So just simply by the colour of my skin, I felt like life just was already going to set me on yeah. another path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am so grateful for that, though, those, those challenges and that really brought me to the person that I am today. Yeah, sure. My parents divorced when I was three. And then I'm going, wait, is this like... No, no, this is is giving me questions. Yeah, Yeah, take us on the journey. Okay, okay. I could have done 30 seconds, but let me take (laughs) you on a journey here. No, this is awesome. Um, So, yeah, my parents split up and it wasn't one of those nice divorces. It was pretty bad. We had children's court involved, child custody. And my mum ended up losing, I suppose, the court case. And she then remarried and moved over to Sydney. So my stepdad and my mum started a new life in Sydney and I went to live, me and my brother, my older brother of two years, lived with my grandma and my dad. 
and we grew up in primary school and so forth. So that was kind of the first, my first fork in the road where there were challenges and mental health issues there. We'll Mm -hmm. talk about why I'm super passionate into mental health in a minute. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of like, this is all my fault at four years old. Why are my parents splitting? Maybe it's me Um, going to school. Why isn't anyone else Chinese? Okay, let me try and blend in a little bit and like pretend to be another culture, another race. I dealt with a lot of that sort of stuff without even having that conscious awareness of it. That was kind of fine. I went into high school, quite a bubbly student, quite high achieving naturally uh, very independent. I was forced to be very independent quite early on. And so then high school moved in and wanted to study psychology. I guess that came from that parents divorcing, going through a little bit of that depression, wanting to fit in. Mental health just seemed like the thing to go. So from a very early start, I wanted to be a psychologist. And I studied my way through high school and then eventually into uni studying psych. Um, Where'd you study your psych? Monash. Oh, Monash, yeah. Literally, that's, yeah, yeah. just here, man, represent. So Monash Clayton, it's an yeah. amazing school, amazing uni. Um, I had to choose between Melbourne and Monash, and it was really a no-brainer. The the culture and everything, yeah. it's amazing, it's incredible. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then, so straight out of high school, though, for that 18-year-old gap, I was like, yeah, my freedom and everything, mm. it was pretty cool. Um, and I fell in love. So 18, I had boarded a late-night train, and... I saw a guy there, it was like an empty carriage, it was just me and two other girlfriends and we were pretty already intoxicated sort of thing and saw a boy there and I was like fascinated by him. He just he just looked really different and looked really unique and I was quite confident at the time and him being solo, it was like just a power in numbers. So I'm yeah. like, hey man, <laughs> how are you? Had a little bit of a banter and super keen. It was really, really good looking. And I was like, Hey, is your name Gus on the back of his hip top phone at the time? Like they have these massive swipe phone things. Yeah. I don't know if anyone That's remembers. No, none yeah, of us remember. was <laughs> <laughs> probably before your time, but <laughs> you used to like slide and on the back of the phone, it'd have this just massive sticker yeah. label, like this size, um, saying G U S. And it was like Gus. And I'm like, Hey, is your name Gus? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, well, my name is Mel. And we had a little bit of a chat and I was like, can you open my cruiser bottle? And he <laughs> like, so Melbourne. yeah, right. <laughs> can you imagine it? Yeah. Frank's and train line as well (laughs) (laughs) and um and he happily obliged and we both knew it was a twist top so uh and then from there it was kind of like went went into this huge journey of falling in love for the first time yeah and i went into this massive journey of like the first of everything moving in together um going overseas together for the first time buying a car for the first time and all this incredible stuff for the first time Mm. He helped me all the way through uni. I studied psychology, went and graduated with my honours in psychology, did the four years in that. And then we went, sort of had a gap year and we went travelling and did a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to skip it forward a bit and then we can go down a bit. Um, Then 2014, January, after six years of being together with my partner, my partner Gus died by suicide. And now that would, I would say, would be the second biggest fork in the road for me after my parents divorced. I felt like... Oh, that's even just saying that now, I'm like, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, At 23 year old, that was heavy for me. And there was a lot there. So we can unfold a little bit there later. But then throughout that journey of healing and understanding like, what, what is my purpose here? Why am I here? When something that traumatic happens, I think when you're so young and unexpected and your life goes into this crisis, it, you can either go two ways. You can either fold or you can get up off the, like off the ground and, um, figure out what it is and how you can find meaning out of this yep. mess and this mm. pain. So that's kind of where my journey took me. Think like I'm so grateful for my psych background. Yep. I think without that psychology background and the foundations, it wouldn't have set me up to be able to heal or like just grieve yep. in it yep. without that process or mm-hmm. logic to like what is actually happening right now. So that was 2014 and it took me on this massive – journey of not being so academic anymore Gus was incredibly I'd say creative he Mm. was head to toe covered in tattoos he had massive spaces in his ears long like real rock star sort of vibe and I was like this nice little Chinese girl (laughs) 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 studied studied at uni (laughs) and I went to all these cute events um so it it forced me to kind of just like hey what's really important here and what's like is this all there is and what is the meaning of life because he was this really colorful sort of character so I ended up falling into a role that um, led me completely out of psych 
and I started running the Australian Tattoo Conventions. Okay, yeah. So, cool. so um, my boss at the time then saw the opportunity, got me a PA role as a personal assistant and I scaled that pretty quickly and excelled quite well at that. And for the better of four years, we literally travelled every major city around Australia and serviced these Australian tattoo conventions. And what I really loved about that was tattoos was just such a big way of being able to like celebrate authenticity and like who we were and behind tattoos I was always so curious at like what does the journey behind yeah, that yeah. mean you know yeah. it's it's so much more than a tattoo yeah, for I people agree. that get tattooed you know and so that was kind of the journey that I really wanted to express it was in a way also incredibly healing losing my partner um who was covered in tattoos and then being able to experience yeah, a bit yeah. of his world and going through that um that Role finished up in 2017. I kind of hit a glass ceiling after four years traveling all those shows. And it was really incredibly rewarding, got me a lot of skill set. But it was then time to sort of like, look, what else was beyond that? And how else can I start creating a legacy for my own? Mm. And what can I do to contribute? Um, so I th- ironically, the next natural thing is to start my own business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it wasn't really like that, but kind of ignorance and stuff. It was kind of like, well, I'm just going to like be an entrepreneur and like start this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do my own thing. Yeah. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to work for myself. All this really cool stuff. And I looked at the market and was like, okay, my skill set is in trade show and events, yeah. okay, and exhibitions. Yeah. And what does Melbourne need as an entrepreneur? The whole pro- thing is to solve a problem. Yeah. So what is it that my skill set can provide and where can I solve this problem? Um, outside of tattoos, the next thing that I kind of loved was fashion, in particular streetwear and street culture fashion. So I started looking at the market and it's like, hey, there's actually nothing here um, in Australia that does a platform that services brands, streetwear brands, and brings customers to them face to face. Yeah, I can't think of it. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that there is is like markets mm. mm-hmm. or really underground stuff. Yeah, yeah. So nothing's really popping that's making street culture like actually invited by the mainstream yeah. like yeah, culture true. and getting recognised compared to the Americas and the Europes of the world. Yep. Australia's falling a little bit short mm. and we've got so much creativity here. We've got so much richness in culture, just no real big platform to share. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to do that. Mm. <laughs> and, it's awesome. Um, so that's kind of how Ego Expo was born and that's how co- my business model was born. Mm. Yeah, so so, there's the, there's yeah, so now Ego yeah, Ego Expo is Australia's current largest and uh, lifestyle uh, celebration of street culture. And what we do is we're basically a melting pot of street culture, everything from fashion, sport, music, uh, street food, street dance and street art wow. all in one. Mm. Um and yeah, that's kind of like me in a nutshell. That's kind of what I'm doing now. I've started an events agency. Ego Expo is our flagship event. It's our yeah. largest event. But as I said, with all these other meetings and stuff throughout the year, I'm also event planning everything from concept to delivery. So yeah, we okay. have corporate clients. We do restaurant launches. We do weddings. That's we incredible. do fundraisers. And that's kind of what I've been doing. <laughs> it it definitely busy. keeps me busy, but it's so much fun when it's um, you're, you're really building something and you're seeing something yeah. start yeah. from absolutely nothing to then where it's at and now, you know, getting invited on podcasts, getting recognised on sort of all this stuff and being able to share that knowledge and being able to then apply all that mental health stuff in my journey. Like I share that story not to be like having a pity party. Mm. I share it to give people context and then to actually be like, shit, this girl's not only gone through something, but that's that something has created this amazing beauty and I wouldn't have been able to see that five years ago. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's me. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because so many different. Wow. Like, yeah, I feel like there's deep questions, but and now we mm. fight. 